13 Vendémiaire Year 4, the 5th of October 1795 in the French Republican calendar, is the name given to a battle between the French revolutionary troops and royalist forces in the streets of Paris. This battle was part of the establishing of a new form of government, the so-called Directory, and it was a major factor in the rapid advancement of Republican General Napoleon Bonaparte's career. Topic: <laughs> Background. The social reforms of the French Revolution had been well received by the majority of the populace of France, but the Revolution's strongly anti-Catholic stance had created anti-Republican sympathies in many Roman Catholics. In March 1793, this sentiment boiled over into an armed insurrection in the fiercely Catholic Vendée region of western France. A rebel army titled Armée Catholique et Royale now proved to be a thorn in the side of the revolutionary government in Paris, under leaders such as François de Charette de la Country and Louis d'Albay. The rebels were known as Schwans, a title which comes from early royalist leader Jean Cotterot's nickname Jean Schwan. He was known for his perfect imitation of an owl's cry, a noise which had become the rallying cry of the insurgents of Vendée. The Armée Catholique et Royale quickly garnered British support and got off to a promising start, severely defeating several revolutionary armies. The Revolutionary Committee of Public Safety ordered General Jean Baptiste Carrier to pacify the region, and over several months, Carrier ruthlessly decimated the populace of the Vendée. The local population dubbed carriers forces the colonies infernalis hellish columns. On the 22nd of December 1793, the Schwann Rebellion subsided following a major defeat at the Battle of Savonay. Following the 9th Thermidor, those Schwans willing to lay down arms were granted amnesty by the reformed National Convention. The Schwans responded by attacking the Republican-held town of Gemene on 28 January 1795. The convention immediately ordered General Hotch to proceed to the Vendée and force the Schwans to agree to a cessation of hostilities. Hotch quickly defeated the Schwan army and on 17 February François de Charette de la Country signed a very generous peace settlement. A small contingent of royalists under the command of General Stofflet and the fanatical Abbé Bernier refused to accept the peace settlement and continued to offer resistance to Hotch's army. They were supported by the British in the form of 4,000 émigrés, 80,000 muskets, and 80 cannon, along with food, clothing, and even a large quantity of counterfeit assignats to provide the Schwans with funding, but also to unbalance the French economy. This large force was placed under the command of émigré generals Puisset and Hermely. Hearing of this, de Charette de la Country broke the peace agreement and reopened hostilities. On 26 June, the émigré force landed at Carnac. Hermely quickly advanced on Ore before engaging and being defeated by Hotch at Vannes. By early July, Hemely had been forced out of Ore and was besieged in the fortress of Pentheev. This meant that the entire insurgent army was now trapped on the Quiberon Peninsula. On 15 July, an additional émigré division arrived to bolster the defence, under the command of General Sombroy, but Hermely was killed in action on 16 July. By the 20th, the fortress had fallen and Hotch swiftly advanced down the peninsula, defeating the hopelessly trapped émigré army. Only General Puisset and a small force were able to escape with the British fleet, the remainder were killed in action, taken prisoner, or executed. Despite the failure of the émigré army, de Charette de la Country continued to offer resistance. In early September, a popular revolt broke out in the area around Drew, but it was defeated in battle at Nonancourt. De Charette de la Country himself suffered a major defeat at Saint Cyr on 25 September. Despite this, the Comte d'Artois landed at Ile de U with 1,000 émigrés and 2,000 British troops. Bolstered by this force, the Royalist troops began marching on Paris in early October 1795. The arrival of the Comte d'Artois excited the Yoines Doré royalist supporters in the Le Pelletier section of the capital named for the Rue Le Pelletier in what is now the 2nd arrondissement, and they began demonstrations in the form of felling liberty trees and trampling tricolor cockades. Rumours began to circulate regarding the likely defection of the entire Paris National Guard. Vendemier. The convention quickly realized that it was in severe danger, and that an enemy force was on French soil. Indeed, the uprising in Paris meant that there was now an enemy force within the capital itself. The convention declared its intention to remain in their meeting rooms until the crisis was resolved. 
It called for the formation of three battalions of Patriots to be raised from the Jacobin military staff dismissed after 9 Thermidor. General Baron de Manu was given command of the defense of the capital, but he was severely outnumbered with only 5,000 troops on hand to resist the 30,000-man Royalist army. On 12 Vendemiaire the, 4th of October, the National Guard arrived in Le Pelletier in an attempt to put down the unrest. The military committee of the sections of the capital under the command of Richard de Sevigny announced that the decrees of the convention were no longer recognized. General Danikin took command of the National Guard in the La Pelletier section. The convention ordered Manu to advance into La Pelletier, to disarm the entire area, and to close Danikin's headquarters. Generals Despierres and Verdier were sent to Manu to assist him. Manu divided his force into three columns and planned an advance into La Pelletier on the evening of 12 Vendemiaire. When the advance was set to begin, Despierres reported that he was unwell and unable to proceed, and Verdier refused to advance. Manu timidly advanced towards the royalist force, inviting the rebels to discuss terms of their dispersal. He withdrew after receiving the insurgents' promise to disarm. The Le Pelletier section, seeing this as a sign of weakness on the part of the convention, called upon the other sections of Paris to rise up. Manu realized his mistake, and launched a cavalry attack down the Rue du Faubourg Montmartre, temporarily clearing the area of royalists. The convention dismissed Manu from the command and ordered Paul Barris to take over the defense of the convention. A whiff of grape shot Young General Napoleon Bonaparte was aware of the commotion, and he arrived at the convention around this time to find out what was happening. He was quickly ordered to join Barris forces mustering for the defense of the Republic. Bonaparte accepted, but only on the condition that he was granted complete freedom of movement. At 1 a.m. on 13 Vendemiaire, the 5th of October, Bonaparte overrode Barris, who was content to let him do as he wished. Bonaparte ordered Joachim Murat, a Sous lieutenant in the 12 e Regiment de Chasseurs à Cheval, to ride to the Plain of Sablins and to return with the 40 cannons which Manu had indicated were located there. Murat's squadron retrieved the cannon before the Royalists arrived and Bonaparte organized their arrangement, placing them in commanding areas with effective fields of fire. At 5 a.m., a probing attack by the Royalist forces was repulsed. Five hours later, the major Royalist assault began. The Republican forces were outnumbered by approximately six to one, but they held their perimeter all the same, the cannons firing grapeshot into the massed Royalist forces. The Patriot battalions supporting the artillery also cut down the advancing Royalist ranks. Bonaparte commanded throughout the two-hour engagement, and survived unscathed despite having his horse shot from under him. The effect of the grape shot and the volleys from the Patriot forces caused the Royalist attack to waver. Bonaparte ordered a counterattack led by Marat's squadron of chasseurs. At the close of the battle, around 300 Royalists lay dead on the streets of Paris. Scottish philosopher and historian Thomas Carlyle later famously recorded that, on this occasion, Bonaparte gave his opponent a whiff of grape shot, and that, the thing we specifically call French Revolution is blown into space by it. That is, 13 Vendemiaire marks the ending of the French Revolution. The phrase is often ascribed to Bonaparte himself, but the words are probably Carlyle's. Aftermath The defeat of the Royalist insurrection extinguished the threat to the convention. Bonaparte became a national hero, and was quickly promoted to general de division. Within five months, he was given command of the French army conducting operations in Italy. The defeated Royalists, in an effort to portray the Republican defense as a massacre, nicknamed Bonaparte General Vendemiaire, a title which he later claimed would be his first title of glory. In film The first episode of the 2002 miniseries Napoleon portrays the Battle of 13 Vendemiaire. <laughs> Notes